today's video, I'll be attempting to eat like YouTuber's wellness darling, Natasha Oshien. Well, you know, kinda, sorta, we'll see. Before we get into it, definitely check out my disclaimer on screen. And if you're not already subscribed, please get on it. Natasha has a lot of wedding day content, so I'm just gonna base this off of one of the most recent ones that I saw at the time of filming. And of course, we gotta start with coffee. This is my second coffee of the morning. The first was very functional. It's got a very specific function to it, okay? It's not to be enjoyed, it's got one purpose, <laughs> and it's effective. Poo serum. The second one is for fun. Hopefully it's not functional. <laughs> if it's functional, we've got a problem. I definitely feel that, except my function coffee is mainly to like help me wake the f up to safely care for my kids. And my second coffee of the day is more for relaxation and pleasure because I finally get to enjoy it quietly without a bunch of people screaming my name. I have the most extremely extra coffee ritual. I'm gonna take you guys with me today. So right now, this is how I'm doing it. I've got my two shots of espresso. I have some soy milk but I don't like it all to be soy milk because then it's like a little too sweet. Soy milk is naturally sweet and it gets too sweet. Um, so then I do the rest of almond milk because I don't want too coffee-ish. I like it a little bit more milky. And then I add a hint of this um, French vanilla oat creamer. I love this stuff. It's not sweet at all, but it just adds like a little hint of kind of creaminess and also the vanilla flavor. And most importantly, you have to have a matching straw. And while I take this little meditative moment with my second coffee of the day. Abby, is it safe to rely on coffee to make you poop? So first of all, as most people watching can probably attest, a strong coffee can and does often make you need to poop. Research suggests that this can often occur within just four minutes of drinking it. So yeah, you better be prepared. Part of this is related to coffee's makeup. So water, caffeine, other really important bioactive compounds, which are all playing a role. So coffee releases the hormone gastrin, which contracts the colon muscles and gives you that urge to go. But the other really interesting part is the whole routine of it all. Having a strong bathroom routine, aka a time of day at the same time of day when you can peacefully go without disturbance is often key for promoting bowel motility and regularity thanks to the strength of our brain gut access. So is it safe to rely on coffee as part of your routine? Well, I mean, whether or not you mean to, most of us just kind of do this naturally because we wake up and we have coffee in the morning. And I don't think you need to stop that out of fear that your bowel is becoming addicted. We definitely wouldn't want to rely on caffeine solely for motility and regularity because too much and we can end up with diarrhea and not enough focus on things like fiber can really affect the quality of our poops. But if you need to stop drinking coffee and therefore are worrying that you won't be able to poop without it, maintaining that same morning routine like we did when we had our coffee in the mix definitely can help. All right, drop the twins off the pool. It's time to fill her back up. What's for breakfast, Natasha? We've also got poached eggs with carrot hummus and like a tomato and sunflower salad and then sourdough. And then, I don't know, that just looks, it looks tasty, but I don't know what it is. This is what intrigues me the most. Ooh, sweet or savory, sweet or savory. It's so hard. I mean, that waffle looked next level good, but you guys are always harping on me for doing sweet breakfast. So we're gonna go savory today because it also looked amazing and also just probably way easier for a weekday. Okay, so Natasha had carrot hummus on that plate, which looked damn good because I love hummus and I love carrots. But why make hummus when you have hummus and also have carrots? So we're gonna put them together and see what we got. Da -da 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 -da. That sounds like some kind of put them together in. It sounds like a preschool song that it's just, mm, can't quite grasp it. Okay, hummus down. This is the first time I'm using this food processor, so if it is a complete fail, we'll do a five hours later while I redo it. This is my massive bowl of cooked carrots because as you guys can see, I eat a lot of carrots because it's one of the easiest vegetables on my gut. And it's also one of my favorites. And the kids love them too. So it's just like a family affair. Carrots, let's do like a good amount. And we don't need any more salt, I don't think. Yes, it would look better if I 
made it from scratch, guys. What can I do to make this better? You know when you try to save time and you just end up spending more time fixing the problems that wouldn't have been a problem had you just done it right in the first place? It's basically how I spend all my day. Little lemon juice, little avocado oil, it's probably good. All right, that's good, that's gonna work. It's gonna work, guys, it's gonna work. What else do we need, what else? Oh, we need some toast. Mm. Guys, this is the best sourdough in Toronto, in my opinion. It smells so good. Get in there, baby. This is how you poach an egg. I always order poached eggs because I love them, but I also feel like it's annoying to make them at home because you can only put one in at, at a time. Okay. Oh, a little bit of vinegar to a low, a little simmy simmy, and take any kind of instrument. Get a little vortex going. Try not to splash yourself with boiling water. There you go. It's like a little dance. It's an interpretive dance. Yeah. Okay, let that sit for about three minutes and we're gonna get the rest all ready to go. This looks amazing. Let's recap here. We have protein in our hummus plus our eggs. I've got healthy fats in our avocado plus lots of fiber in our sourdough and our little salad. I always forget about breakfast salads, but it's super satisfying. Okay, we got it to poke. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, I don't know how I'm doing this, but. Mmm, I need a bib. And speaking of diets that slap, I wanna to touch on Natasha's approach to her diet because some might call it out as problematic. Okay, so you guys know that usually I eat intuitively, if you wanna call it that. I eat when I'm hungry, I stop when I'm full, that's how we do it. But because I'm training for my first 100 mile ultra marathon race and my training has changed a little bit, we're also shifting the food philosophy to girls gotta eat. And that means just being extra generous with my portion because my training volume has gone up. Like before I was training four hours a week and I was eating probably like 2,300 to 2,500 calories. Now I'm training six hours a week. I've got two two hour endurance sessions, two one hour gym sessions. I wanna make sure that I'm prioritizing performance and that I'm really fueled up and that I'm recovering properly. So girls gotta eat. So first of all, I do appreciate the air quotes on intuitive eating here because a lot of intuitive eating experts would claim that her approach is not really intuitive eating. And by definition, intuitive eating is not just eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. It's about rejecting the diet mentality, respecting your body and its natural shape and size, rather than trying to manipulate it to lose fat. Natasha has a lot of videos on her channel specifically outlining how to lose fat. And honestly, I think they're great. Like they're evidence-based, they're helpful, and they offer sustainable nutrition first approach, even if they're not officially compatible with intuitive eating. But you know what? I think that's okay. I believe in body autonomy and if Natasha wants to manipulate her macros and her calories for fat loss and for her marathon training goals, as we see in this particular video, I think that makes complete sense. This is just my opinion, but I think intuitive eating doesn't need to be done officially or perfectly or in its entirety to be beneficial. And I think that Natasha has a really great grasp on what works for her. Well said, and I am not training for a marathon, so I definitely don't need 27 to 3000 calories. So even though I personally don't share exactly how many calories I eat or exactly how much I eat, I do assume just based on my own knowledge of my own body that it's probably a little less than that. And this is why I don't like those challenge videos where people eat exactly like another celebrity, even though it doesn't feel good to them. And speaking of copying someone else's day, I won't be doing this. I hate leg day. Thankfully, I do not own a leg press for good reason, but I can get down for a little 20 minute OG Natasha Ocean workout. Let's do it. I 
enjoy that. Not a marathon workout, so probably don't need a marathon meal, but your girl can always go for a little lunch. Natasha, what are we having? love this journey for us, except I'm gonna do a less aesthetic, less time-consuming version. Oh, f I knew this would be a bad idea. Because not to diminish the work of fellow creators, but like who has time to cook a full meal from scratch in the middle of the workday? Ain't nobody got time for that. I do not. This is more than I even normally do. So you have the thought of cooking chicken from a raw state at 12 o'clock is completely foreign to me. So I'm gonna lean on my trusty Caskel uh, <laughs> rotisserie chicken. You have to say it that way, <laughs> Caskel. And I'm gonna make like a salad version of this with all the same flavors, but just easier. I'll show you what I mean. We're gonna throw our salad greens down, some orange, our beets, our chicken. We got our walnuts, some chev, some lemon, yoink, a little honey, salt, oh, there's a lot of pepper in there. Pepper, a little harissa, and a little avocado oil. So Natasha has two big slices of sourdough with her lunch, which totally makes sense giving her training regimen. Carbs are so important, especially when you're training for endurance. But I know my body and my needs, and I think a single slice will totally do the trick. Oh, this smells amazing. The Harissa spice mix. Usually I buy Harissa in a paste, but I found on the spice mix and I was like, you know what? I feel like this is more useful in general. I can put it into more things. And it just like, oh. It, the aromatics is next level good. We've got protein in our chicken, fiber in our fruits, veg, and all the greens, plus the sourdough bread. And we got healthy fats in the cheese, olive oil, and the walnuts on top. For something I just whipped up on the fly, I'm pretty excited about this. You gotta get a little bit of the beet action. Mmm, mmm, the harissa, mm-hmm, nailed it. And speaking of carbs to meet my own needs, I probably don't personally need this. Honestly, I'm just gonna say it. I don't really like juice. And as I talked about in my video on what a dietitian doesn't eat, you know, I used to cite juice as one of my biggest fear foods. The thought of drinking my calories, especially like straight up carbs, was like sacrilege to me. But once I allowed myself to have juice without judgment, I don't know, I actually just realized I didn't really like it that much. I have really sensitive teeth, so the thought of having a big glass of something super acidic and sweet doesn't sit well with me. And also I'm very prone to energy crashes after having a lot of naked carbs, like a glass of juice. That said, Natasha is training, so she needs all the naked carbs and calories and hydration that she can get. So I think juice is an incredible staple for those with heavy training needs. And speaking of yummy carbs, another snack is on the agenda here. Anything that's as close to salted caramel as possible, I'm there. Oh my God. I do am a full on salted caramel addict. I'm obsessed with it. Anything salted caramel is for me. And I also love me a froyo bowl. So normally I would be all in on something like this. But I eat dinner at like a geriatric hour with my kids. And I also know myself at these froyo places. Like you give me a bowl this big, I will just fill it just to be filled with like $30 worth of toppings. I want it all. Even if I'm only hungry for like two bites. So I just wanna be honest and transparent here that as much as I would love me a mid-afternoon froyo bowl, it probably just wouldn't work for my general eating schedule. AKA, I'm gonna save it for dessert. Uh, that looks insanely gorgeous, though also annoyingly fussy considering that I know my kids don't like sweet potatoes and I would probably spend an hour expertly and aesthetically fanning them out only for them to just chuck it on the ground. So I'm gonna do like a much more simple, easy, fast version. Let's do it. We're gonna cook this en papillote. Again, the French are gonna come after me. En papillon, en papillon, en papillon, en papillon. That's how we say it in Canada. Okay, 
We have sweet potatoes going down. No need to fan, no need to do anything fancy. Just make a little bed. A Little bit of avocado oil, salt, pepper. Oh, shit. My life is ruined. I'm ruined. I have nothing left except Spider-Man. All right, moving on. Fish. Nice little piece of white fish here. This is gonna become like the McDonald's like salt pepper combo that they just use for quick seasoning. A little salt and pepper. Let's throw some snap peas down. I've got some mm, artichokes, a little bit of oil. I'm gonna just put some of that flavored oil there. Yup. And some lemon. Now we attempt to wrap this up and I know I'm gonna fail greatly at that exercise because I made it too damn big. Need a larger piece of parchment. Nice, may succeed. We're gonna pop this into a 400 degree oven until the sweet potatoes cook down and the white fish is mm, chef's kiss. Oh, I love en papillon cooking, it's so easy. Where are my oven mitts? Guys. Oh, it's beauty. This literally took 20 minutes, guys. And yes, I admit, it's not as aesthetic as the beautiful fan sweet potato situation, but it meant that I got something else done in my day and that I'm thankful for. We got protein in our white fish here, healthy fats in the oil and the avocado and the pine nuts I added. Oh, I'm excited. Pea action sounds weird. Yeah, pea action, not appetizing, I admit, guys. I'm sorry about that. Mmm, the artichoke oil is a must. It does double duty and it performs. She works. She works. Oh, it is so good. It is perfection. I'm not gonna mess with it. But Natasha's Froyo adventure of putting all the yummy toppings on definitely got me inspired. So we're gonna go in my pantry, find all the goodies we can, and put together an epic Froyo bowl. Let's do it. All right. It is a mess in here. I really need to go through and just like organize all this crap. I mean, we have some great varieties here. Airheads might be an interesting topping. Ooh, Smarties, all other kind of Smarties. Canadian Smarties, Reese's peanut butter cups, a massive cookie from a bridal shower, which has not been consumed and probably shouldn't be consumed at this point. Oh, gummy worms, gummy bears, minion cookies. Oh my gosh, the, the variety here, guys. You don't know until you go digging all the crap you've got here. And I got some coconut, got some nuts. I think we'll throw some fruit in there. We got a good bowl, let's do it. So this is the problem when you go to the Froyo place. My eyes are bigger than my stomach and I just wanna sample everything. I didn't even know half the was in my pantry and now suddenly I need it. I need it all in this bowl. This, this is a modest size bowl. All right, Froyo down. We gotta leave lots of space for everything else allegedly. Oh yeah, <laughs> allegedly. So some berries, a little. A little fresh fruit. All right, I'm doing some pistachios because I love pistachios. Ooh, coconut, always a hit. Decisions, oh, these are really delicious. I know we have fresh blueberries, but I've got freeze-dried blueberries and frozen blueberries with chocolate on them. Mm. This is too fun. And then like a little something sweet because this is not sweet. We'll do a gummy worm, just like that. What a bowl. She's posing. She's flexing. Right, girl? Oh yeah. How fun is this? I don't even have to roll on downtown, spend 30 bucks on basically just candy because I have enough of it in my own pantry. Mm. Mmm, bread freeze. Mmm, mmm. This is so much better than the Froyo place anyway. You know, a dollar an ounce, but people don't know how much is an ounce. It's not a lot. And then when you fill that whole thing up right to the top and the swirl and the toppings, you're looking at a pretty penny for just like, let's forget it. Great, <laughs> just my rant. <laughs> Raise your hand if you agree, but I feel like a lot of us women have trust issues because of Pinkberry, like exclusively Pinkberry. Because they give you this bowl. 
If you're Froyo obsessed, especially in today's economy, it is a way more budget friendly option to just go to the dollar store, pick up some little snacks and candies, get some fruit, whatever toppings you are excited about. And then you can build endless bowl varieties at home. Mm. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have these mandarins because they're really good at lunch. And I'm just fancying mandarins. You guys think I'd forget about the mandarins? We go through these things like water. Mm. And I also desperately needed a bedtime snack because I underestimated how light the fish was. Mm. Oh, there's nothing better than like a juicy, plump clementine. So I got a couple of these a la Natasha. And because this is just not gonna cut it, I've also got this deliciously addictive coconut seed nut cluster situation. Mm. They're like so good. Mm. Mm. Okay, that was such a fun day. And I feel like unlike every other diet that I've watched or reviewed or tried to kind of like use as inspiration for my own meals in some ways, Natasha's meals are spot on. We got color, variety, balanced macros. We got lots of fun foods in there. And Natasha actually eats enough calories to meet her needs. Revolutionary, unfortunately. I literally didn't have to change anything. It all looked so good. I basically just tweaked the meals and portions to meet my own dietary needs and also made them a little simpler and easier because I just don't have the patience to cook like that all day. But if you guys like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like me to try next. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.